Uh, like the animals, we are by nature, by default, uh, optimists. Uh, animals don't go on the hunt unless they expect to catch something. Uh, they don't do elaborate make mating rituals unless they expect to mate and so on. And they don't bring offspring into the world unless they expect them to um, survive. Of course, I say expect them to. There's no conscious thing going on there. There's just um, nature survival and procreation drives. Those same drives drive us. If you want to know what you spend most of your time doing, it's servicing your survival and procreation drives. Now, um, they're strong and they're well developed because they need to be, otherwise you wouldn't survive. But uh, are they the best things to listen to? Well, hopefully by the time we get to the end of this, you'll see that the answer is no. So, our prime driver, let's, let's talk about optimism. Our prime driver is for survival, and once we've ensured survival, then it's very often, not always, but very often procreation. Now, virtually everybody has a sex drive, but they may not want kids. The drive is a thing. Um, so we're naturally going to want things that enhance our survival prospects and our, pro and our uh, procreation prospects. So it's natural for people to want money, things, stuff, you know, fancy cars, maybe a nice big house, uh, fancy food maybe. It's natural to want those things because your survival instincts, what I call the beast, wants those things. But um, you should know that these drives take no account of you. They, they just belong to nature. It's what you've inherited. Um, without intelligence, these drives can become a bit unruly. In fact, those drives can destroy lives, oddly enough. So, optimism is kind of our natural state. You know, we go to work hoping for a promotion, maybe. We go to some nightclub hoping to find Mr. or Mrs. Ideal. Uh, everything we do is based on the idea that there will be some positive outcome in terms of survival or procreation. Now, uh, it should be obvious that optimism is based on hope. Otherwise you wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. So you do XYZ because you expect XYZ to give you the outcomes you want. You hope. But the problem is that the other side of hope is fear. So every time you hope for a particular outcome, you are hoping against the fear that that outcome doesn't happen. So optimism really is a fear based approach to life. You're trying to satisfy some kind of desire. And there's always the the um, background assumption that your efforts and so on may not uh, work out, may not give you what you want. So, you know, we can talk about <coughs> we might call the normal optimism. Well, I'm cooking a meal because I want food, so you know, there's hope that the meal works out and blah blah. That's all perfectly reasonable. But then what we've done is we've kind of turned the amplifier up a bit on it. Well, not a bit, a lot on all of this. So we get um, 
the cult of optimism. In our very, very unhappy society, we have a cult of optimism. You believe that? Um, and as things get worse in life, people will become more optimistic, strangely enough, because their basic drivers, survival and procreation, um, become more intense. You know, when you are threatened in some way, your drivers become amplified. So, you know, there's the strange kind of um, dynamic. As life becomes more threatening, more um, difficult, people will become more optimistic. And that optimism quite likely could lead them to uh, mental health problems because most of what they are um, setting themselves up for because optimism is about setting yourself up won't happen so there will be anxiety and distress and disappointment associated with the things that um, people are optimistic about you know I mean I'm being kind and gentle here about optimism but the reality is it's a wicked thing is people setting themselves up for disappointment and mental stress. And in our optimistic society, one in 16 people that you meet will be taking antidepressants or uh, anxiety medication. You know, all the talk about positive energy, positive attitude, can do, doesn't do anything. There are a number of books out now that are showing that doesn't work. I'll mention those uh, in a moment when I talk about pessimism. So, on the one hand, we have optimism, which is a natural state. And in its truly natural state, it would be kind of moderated. But in our society, it gets ramped up because we are ultra-competitive with each other. And because life is hard, very hard for human beings, so they have to be optimistic. But that leads to mental health problems. So let's talk about pessimism. If you were a true pessimist, if you expected everything not to work, you wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. So there's no real thing such as a 100% you know, pessimist. But... A pessimist is more likely to use their intelligence. So, for example, the optimist may uh, launch a business with all their positive attitude and positive energy and all the rest of it. But one out of ten businesses, f sorry, uh, only one in ten businesses succeeds uh, after a year's time. So nine out of ten are, g are going to fail. The optimist will just say, well, I'm going to be the one in ten that succeeds. Well, you know, be stupid like that if you want. And your uh, positive energy will do nothing. Business success is based on being in the right place at the right time with the right thing, which is largely luck, not positive attitude. So, uh, pessimism. Well, a pessimist will say, well, you know, I've only got a 1 in 10 chance of still being here in a year's time in terms of being in business. So I'm not going to bet the farm on it. Optimists will bet the farm on it. They'll be the ones losing their homes in a year's time. Um, the pessimists will say, well, only 1 chance in 10. So I'm not going to bet the farm on it. And maybe I'll start too. I actually knew a guy who started 18. Knowing damn well that all but two of them would fail. And in fact, there was only one that worked. But it worked big time. And that's a pessimist approach. I call it pessimist, it's more realist, but I'll get to the realist in a moment. Uh, there is, uh, I can't remember the title of them. There are a few books out now showing that pessimists make much better business people than optimists. 
uh, because they expect failure and they plan for it. Because yeah, most of the things, you know, even if we're kind and say that uh, one in two of the things you do is actually going to work, um, then it's still stupid to kind of do all your positive energy stuff. <laughs> be sensible about it uh, and then you won't be disappointed all the time so pessimism is different from optimism optimism is just a pure manifestation of your instincts and desires there's no intelligence there at all pessimism is born from rather more intelligence looking at the facts a little bit um and assuming that a lot of the things you, you're going to do won't work, which is true enough, I'm afraid. So there isn't a huge amount of difference between a pessimist and a realist. A pessimist, you could say, inherently has a negative attitude. A realist doesn't have an attitude, which is why it's very difficult to be a realist. Uh, so, you know, let's just talk about numbers here. Most people that you meet will profess to be optimists. It's very, very unfashionable in our society to be a, a pessimist. People don't want to hear about failure. You know, their lives are tough enough as it is, so they go into optimistic mode and nervous breakdown mode. They won't thank you for you telling them, well, there's only one chance in ten your business is going to be around in a year's time. So, you know, let the optimists, which is the vast majority of people you'll meet, be optimists. It's not in your business, really. Uh, but for God's sake, don't mention that you're a pessimist. Just play along with them. Anyway, we get to realism. The difference with realism, as I've said, is that you don't really have any attitude towards things at all. You're just looking for as much information as you can about what you're going to do and all the rest of it. So, you know, the realist too would say, well, there's one chance in ten that my business will still be around in uh, a year's time. So I'll start two or three. You know, there's no guarantee that any of those are going to be around in a year's time, but at least it's a better chance. Because remember, business success is not based on hard work, it's not based on positive attitudes or positive energy, it's based on luck, being in the right place at the right time with the right thing. Uh, the only other ways to be successful in business are through crime, basically, uh, legal crime. You know, this is why a lot of people in business employ uh, lawyers and so on, so they can be legally criminal uh, or illegally criminal but anyway it's either luck or crime and it's, I imagine most people here would rather depend on luck so um, the realist will say well one chance in ten of my business being around and um, yeah, I'm, you know, let's say they're 40 years old and 40 years old yeah, probably got 30 or 40 years left. Not a lot of point um, flogging myself to death now. Because, I mean, it might not be 30 or 40 years. It might be, you know, 30 or 40 minutes. You never know when the reaper's going to appear. But they'd be realistic about it. Whereas the optimists, they're going to live forever. So they get deeply neurotic about um life and death and in fact um, you, uh, you know I see almost every morning elderly people doing their workouts is it a, a look of happiness or pleasure on their face no they're desperate they want to live forever um, the optimist when they're in a relationship will think that the honeymoon period is what the relationship is. We've just met each other. We've got great sex. Yeah. Or 
we get along really well, we're travelling around the world together, the honeymoon period. So the optimist, of course the optimist wants this because you know procreation is driving them on, they need to have some kind of relationship uh, where they can procreate or at least um, manifest their desire for procreation, it doesn't mean you have to have kids but you know sex is the drive for procreation. So uh, just based on instinct and desire uh, relationships just a nightmare people don't apply any intelligence to it it's oh we get along really well or the, the sex is great or whatever yeah for the first year in fact maybe not even that long um, the pessimist would probably say well you know half the people I know are getting divorced maybe it's not a good idea to um, get into a marriage or something. The realist would say, well, the only way a relationship is going to work is if we apply some understanding to it. And it needs both of us to do that so that we understand each other and work long term to understand each other and form a meaningful relationship. Um, so you can see here that the move from optimism down to realism is really just a move from uh, instinct and desire through to intelligence. That's, that's all. You see the life forces, uh, the desire for survival and procreation are just part of your inheritance um, you know, from your species, from your being a member of Homo sapiens. Uh, those forces don't care about you at all. You know, all they want you to do is live long enough to have kids and then go and die. You know, there's a there's a statement of realism. Most people don't want to hear that because it doesn't um, feed their desire for survival and uh, procreation. Yet there's a, there's the reality. All life wants you to do is live long enough to procreate, rear, rear your kids, and then die. So, we move towards intelligence and living a life that is for us and not just for the satisfaction of our instincts and desires. So, we come to rely on intelligence instead of emotion and instinct. And intelligence requires that we establish some kind of understanding about ourselves and life. Which, handily, um, I didn't design this actually, I've just thought. Uh, my book, um, the minor sorry, A Minority Interest, Understanding Yourself and Life, is now available on uh, Amazon for anybody who is interested in that. Anyway, uh, be an optimist at your own risk. Be a pessimist but basically potentially miss out on things. Be a realist and you have the best chance of living a reasonable life, which is you know, probably what we all want.